Okay, let's talk about carbon buildup on direct injection engines for hopefully the last time on this channel. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, these days. Hey, it's Tim, pickup truck plus SUV talk. I recently was at a Toyota event. And we're doing a bunch of off-road driving and all the different driving vehicles. And I had the opportunity to go over to Sheldon Brown, who's chief engineer for Toyota. He's been an engineer for years and years and years. I mean, talking about 20, 30 years. And we're discussing this about carbon buildup. And it's kind of interesting. It was kind of a throwaway thing for me. I was walking away from the event, ready to drive back to the hotel, ready to, to get home. And I thought, wait a minute. Hold on here. I've done videos on direct injection. I've got my butt kicked. And you guys in the comments, you're like, I'm full of it, Tim. You're not going to talk about. I thought there's another opportunity again for me to learn something new and to ask these engineers what's going on. So if you know, I've talked in this channel about we've had new higher injection pressure going in the cylinder to atomize the, end, the oil in the cylinder much better. We've discussed how Babylon has new oil that they discontinued, but then they kept around for a while. They're supposed to not build up in the engine. And you guys have all said, nah, eh, eh, eh. I've got Facebook comments and all sorts of stuff. So I went over to Sheldon. I said, Sheldon, help man out. What is going on with this? Toyota has a D4S system, which means it's got direct injection and port injection. And according to you guys in the comments, you have said port injection is the only way to get rid of carbon buildup. Yeah, that's what you have to do. Because if you don't do it, ooh, you have this really nasty spot on top of the intake valve full of this carbon. Carbon buildup is basically leftover oil that and fuel that wasn't totally autonomized. So it basically exploded completely inside the cylinder. It builds up on top of the intake valves, and your performance of the engine goes down, and efficiency and all that kind of stuff. And just people just, they just, they really don't like this stuff. I know. I read lots of comments every day. I, I, I know. So I said, Sheldon, you know, what is happening here? You know, you guys have it, so that's what's going to happen, right? This is the holy grail. And Sheldon looked at me and he says, you know, we don't advertise it. But port injection can help with direct, with the carbon buildup. I was like, wait, what can help? Like, I've been told and I've been led to believe that port injection is the only way you get rid of carbon buildup. Right? Direct injection is a really good system. Much more efficient as far as fuel usage, much better performance. Port injection idles a bit better, doesn't have a, such rough idle. Direct injection, I've learned, is not a very good idling system. But port injection is cleans the cylinders off, cleans the intake valves off, excuse me, and it keeps everything nice and clean. And he's like, well, it may help, right? So, like, you look at this picture here, we have the gasoline direct injection and port injection. So, direct injection goes below the intake valve, port injection goes on top of the intake valve. And this makes a big difference because we have these new systems called exhaust gas recirculation. Again, I talk too fast. I mumble. I get this. I'm going to enunciate exhaust gas recirculation. So what happens is, is when the gases leave the cylinder, they can go up and around back into the exhaust gas recirculation and go back in top of the cylinder and go back on top of the intake valves. Why does that make a difference? Well, if you have a little iota, a little speck of your finger with oil on it, and you send that oil back and around the system, and it goes on top of those intake valves, well, then you get the dun, 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 the nasty-looking intake valve full of carbon buildup. So you don't want that, right? You don't want any oil going around there and going on through the exhaust gas circulation and going on top of the intake valves. I get that. Trust me. You guys beat me down much in the comments. I get that. So I was like, well, hold on, Sheldon. You're saying that this system with port fuel injection, which goes on top of those intake valves and makes them nice and shiny and clean all over again, can help? It can? It can make a difference? Like, what do you mean it can? Like, so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, Sheldon's like, not all of a sudden, but Sheldon's like, no, 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 no. He goes, what really makes a difference, what really makes a difference is the positive crankcase ventilation. Okay, here we go. There's a new terminology for me. I spent actually, like, oh, I spent some time researching what this is, right? So positive crankcase ventilation system, right? This is this. What we're doing here is we're getting the, I, I can't post it anymore, but I'll put my thing in there. But we're taking, we have that exhaust, right? We have blow-by vapors entering the crankcase. 
These are blow-by vapors that have a little bit of oil in them. This is what goes around. It goes, blow-by vapors go up the PCV valve into the cover. The PCV valve is there, it goes back, and it creates recirculation. So PCV valve opens and closes depending on minimum and maximum flow of, of eye speed. So it, it, what the PCV valve does as well is it creates a vacuum that pulls everything out of the cylinder, oil, whatever is in the cylinder, a little bit of oil, pulls it out of the system, right? So we're getting that cylinder being clean. We want the cylinder to be clean. The PCC, PCV valve, Tim, PCV valve, creates a vacuum that pulls the oil out of there. And he goes, that's really the PCV valve makes a big difference. I was like, well, I, again, I'm not a mechanic, but I'm like, wait a minute. Why would that make a difference? Why would that PCV valve make any sort of difference in what's happening with the oil. Because all I'm doing is recirculating the oil and the engine oil by, or the blow-by back around. What's the difference? Well, it's this. And I cannot find a good picture of this, but I'm going to show you something. This is what a PCV valve looks like, right? Goes in the intake valve uh, manifold, pulls the vacuum, pulls the oil up, and sends it around. But a really interesting picture to the left here, right off the picture of my face. By the way, you don't like these recordings. I apologize. There's like two of you people that don't like the way I do these. I'm sorry. I love this system. I love being able to show you guys on screen what I'm talking about. It's great. So what is it to the left? Well, I started looking at the picture to the left, and I, and I talked to the engineers who were there, and they're like, well, it's right there, Tim. I'm like, what do you mean it's right there? Like, I'm really good. I should, was kind of pissed off at this point. But they said it's right here. That PCV valve has a baffling inside of it. And I'm like, is that a baffling? Apparently there is. Apparently the, the Toyota has put a baffling, which I've seen other pictures of this where they put it on top of this. Baffling is a little screen that goes on top of this. It captures the oil coming off the engine through the cylinder. It gets sucked in here, goes in a baffling, right? So in the baffling, and then what you do is the engine gets hotter and it burns the oil off the baffling. So the baffling, so it's like a screen door. So imagine a screen door with the mosquitoes. I like mosquitoes, right? So the mosquito hits the screen door, gets up the screen door. You take your blowtorch. I mean, you take your slice water and you kill the mosquito, right? The mosquito goes. So it doesn't allow the oil to get back into the system to get back to EGR and go back through all of the, the, the exhaust gases. So here we go. PCV valve creates a vacuum, sucks the oil out of the cylinder. Goes into the baffling, gets stuck in the baffling, gets burnt off, and no big deal. Those exhaust gases that come out of the EGR and go around, well, they get intercepted by this vacuum that sucks all those oil out. Well, well, that's really interesting. So then I said, well, okay, let's say you have a baffling there, right? So you have a baffling there, and let's say that's going to stop all the issues. I said, well, okay, so you have a baffling in the PCB valve that keeps the oil from going back into the system. That gets it on top of the intake valve. The engine gets really hot. It burns it off. Engines are hot. That's how they work. And I said, well, what about this idea of a catch can? And I've asked other engineers about this, and sometimes they give blank looks. And this time, oh, I think it a blank look. So what if it was a catch can? Well, a catch can is kind of this idea. I'll put my little cursor over it. But it's the idea here is it, you basically have an inline oil filter or a catch can. And this idea is it's got a baffling inside of it or a operate a way to yeah cheap baffled oil catch can and you bring in the exhaust gases and you put it through the oil can and it captures all that oil and then it doesn't allow it to go back to the gases sounds familiar a pcv valve with a baffling does the same job right so the engineers looked at me and they said well you can do a catch can right on the engine where you're basically duplicating your efforts because the pcv valve already has a baffle. So if you do a baffle with a baffle, it's like having two sets of nets for the same amount of little trickle oil coming through. So they're like, all right, well, so they said, even with port injection, even with the port injection, holy grail of direct injection issues and carbon catch, carbon build up, even with direct injection, they're like, eh, or port injection, like, yeah, it does work. But really, the PCV valve with the baffle, and if you want to, do the catch can, you will get rid of all the oil. And I said, do you guys not do a catch can because another place for more maintenance? They're like, well, yeah. Like, yeah, if we put catch cans on these engines, it's one more maintenance spot. So we don't want more more part on these engines. The parts, engines are having the parts as it is. What we want to do is eliminate parts, make them more reliable, and have less serviceable items 
And if we put that PCV valve on top of the intake valve with the baffle in it that burns off anyways, there's no maintenance. Hmm. That's what I thought. What do you guys think? I know you're dying. I know you've been sitting and chomping a bit. Where am I right? Where am I wrong? Let me hear it. Free comments down below. Let's check out the ch videos on the channel over here. There. <laughs> Website down below as well. PickupTruckTalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road. And hopefully to never talk about this issue again. Which the odds are... <laughs> no, I'll talk about this again.